Let us see further the problems on material balance in reduction in smelting. In an earlier lecture, I have given the introduction to reduction in smelting and the relevant information to solve material balance problem in reduction in smelting. In that lecture also, I have solved one problem on lead. So, here are some more problems on reduction in smelting taking example production of lead in a lead blast furnace. So, problem 2, the charge for blast furnace or lead blast furnace is given. It consists of roasted ore, pyrite cinder, coke and flux. All of you know flux is used to slag to remove the impurities. As a result of smelting or reduction in smelting in blast furnace, mat of this composition is produced. It is said no lead is lost anywhere rather in slag or gases. Normally, there may be some loss of lead in slag or gases, but well depending on the problem you have to consider if it is given, if it is not well you can ignore it. Now, the gases contain here the ratio is given C O is to C O 2 1 is to 1 in that volume. So, you have to calculate what I have written A, B and C. Now, here in the B part this is said the approximate composition and as I have said at many occasions that proximate analysis consists of minerals. That means, you have to report the uh, presence of uh, minerals not as individual elements. That is what the proximate analysis means volume of bus as such you have to do. Now, the problem 3 again there is a different type of problem. Here some more complication has been introduced. Say the burden which consists of center, skimmings, limestone, cinder and coke. Now, skimmings in fact they are this is the product of lead blast furnace which is again recycled uh, in order to recover lead as you see in this particular problem skimmings which is of 10 tons it contains significant amount of lead and lead oxide. So, there is a huge loss of lead. So, many a times in the plant to improve the economy of the uh, blast furnace smelting of lead ore the skimmings are recycled to recover lead. I mean you may recycle in the blast furnace the feed or elsewhere the whole idea is that you do not want to lose lead. So, here sinter that means it is a roasted 150 tons then skimmings, limestone, cinder and coke they are all the charge and as all these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 they constitute and the term which is called burden. Burden consists of all these things. Now, it is further said the conditions of slag and the components which are there it is given to some extent it is said slag contains 10 parts FeO2, 7 parts SiO2. Now, it is also said you neglect lead in slag and gases. Now, further conditions are imposed of the copper charge two third enters into mat and one third into lead bullion. So, remember this problem you should also understand that the product of uh, smelting of uh, ore, lead ore is not pure lead, it is an impure lead and which is called lead bullion. So, when you say lead bullion, it contains several impurities, the copper is one impurity, silver is another impurity, antimony and so on depending upon the elements which are present. So, these are all the impurities, so it is called as a lead bullion. So, it is said one third enters into lead bullion, all sulphur goes into mat all silver enters into lead bullion. So, in fact, in order to get lead you have to further refine and there is a very say a detailed refining sequence of lead uh, uh, production of uh, refined lead from lead bullion several steps are involved uh, for refining of uh, lead bullion to get pure lead. Now, again here the gases carries 1.5 parts of CO and 1 part of carbon dioxide. So, you have to make charge balance. So, now here with the term charge balance you must be very clear uh, what is being required here. So, you have to calculate the uh, input and output both that is what the balance means. Then percentage composition of all products and percentage of carbon burnt at the tier when 90 percent of carbon of coke is burnt to CO and 10 percent to CO2. So, this point is to be kept in mind under that condition you have to solve the problem. Now, the problem fourth a roasted lead ore is smelted in a blast furnace with enough calcium carbonate to make a slag of 18.5 percent calcium oxide. Coke is 16 percent of the roasted ore and analyzes 90 percent carbon and 10 percent SiO2. 
the composition of roasted ore is given. Of the late charge, 5 percent is lost in dust and flue. Now, you see in earlier problem we said no, no loss. Now, some losses are also there. So, this problem illustrates that and 8 percent enters into the mat. Of the copper charge, 50 percent enters into the mat and rest enters with lead bullion. 10 percent of sulphur enters into gases. Per 1000 kg of roasted ore, you have to calculate amounts of lead bullion, mat and calcium carbonate. So, these are the uh, problems that uh, I mean uh, I have read quite slowly so that you can read it and you can understand the problem. And here the answers are given as usual. You should not see the answers before you make a solution. Now, here I will proceed for the solution of these problems. So, let us take it now problem number 2 and problem 2 what is thus say I will first of all calculate say amount of late charge I hope you must have read the problem. So, I am straight away proceeding with the solution. So, amount of lead charged that is you have to calculate you have to see from all sources and the source of lead it is only the roasted ore from where your uh, lead is entering. So, amount of lead charge that is equal to say 310 upon 223 into 207 plus you have lead sulphide also which is 19 percent. So, that is 190 upon 239 into 207. So, that makes around 452 kg of the lead which is being charged. Now, lead in mat as per the problem. lead in mat which is 0 0.02 into 452. So, you have lead in mat is 9.046 kg as per the statement of the problem. So, amount of lead produced then there is no loss anywhere. So, amount of lead produced that will be 452 minus this. So, the answer would be 443. 6 kg. That is answer when it says that you have to calculate the amount of lead produced. Now, the mat to calculate the mat. Now, mat contains a lead sulphide, it contains Cu 2 S and it contains Fe S. Now, what you have to do here you have to make the total balance say first of all if you make the sulphur balance. So, sulphur charged you have to see that from all sources you have to consider sulphur charge and in this problem that is equal to 31.44 kg total sulphur is being charged. Now, you know amount of lead in the mat that is 9.046 kg from there you calculate PBS then see how much amount of sulphur is combined with lead and then you know the copper. So, how much so rest so that amount of copper you calculate in terms of Cu 2 S. So, then the amount of PBS that will be equal to 10.44 kg Cu 2 S that will be 30 kg and Fe S will be 66.1 kg. I hope you can calculate. So, we can calculate amount of PBS from amount of PBS you will be calculating how much sulphur with PBS, Cu 2 S you can calculate and balance sulphur with the that will be iron and that is where you can calculate the amount of FES. Now, next you have to calculate say for example, amount of slag. Now, the slag will contain say SiO 2 that will also contain FeO and it will also contain calcium oxide. So, SiO 2 you have to again it is straight away from all sources. So, if you consider all sources 400 plus 42 plus 19.8 that is equal to 461.8 kg is the SiO 2 and then FeO that will be equal to say iron charge 
right minus iron in mat minus iron in mat that will be the iron in slag and FeO would be 72 upon 56. So, that amount that is equal to 521.28 kg. Now, about calcium oxide it is straight away that is equal to 123.2 kg. So, amount of slag amount of slag that would be 1106.28 kg. Now, all that what it is required here to proceed as per what is given in the uh, problem exactly which amount is going where and then you have to be careful while converting say if you are considering uh, the amount of F O and if you are making iron balance then do not forget to convert to F u. So, these are certain things that one should keep in mind while solving the problem. Uh, many a times I, over the years I have, I have seen that the student might commit a mistake in converting say iron to F u or S i to S i to whatever. That means, it depends upon the uh, elemental balance you do or you can directly do the F u in the slag. I mean it all depends and uh, for that you have to develop an appropriate skill for that. Here, what we are doing simply we are balancing the input and output, and in between input and output, where the material is going, where you should read the problem very carefully and then see where, say, for example, calculation of FeO. Now, in the FeO calculation, whatever iron you have charged, part of the iron is going into the mat, only rest iron is going to select. So, that point is to be clear because it is a material balance input, output, and in between input and output, where it is going, what you have to consider that, and then there should be no problem. Then next we have to calculate volume of gases. Say volume of gases. Now again here I mean there is a skill involved and a method involved. I mean method will vary from whichever way I do what you do, but I will follow this way. So moles of carbon, moles of carbon that is equal to 13.35. Then uh, depending on the ratio. So, moles of carbon for C O that will be equal to 13.35 upon 2 and that of C O 2 will also be 13.35 upon 2 because it is 1 is to 1 ratio. Then I can find out the moles of oxygen for C O 2 and moles of oxygen for C O. So, moles of oxygen moles of O 2 for C O 2 and C O that will be 10.013 kg moles. Now, I have to do oxygen from charge because that much amount of oxygen will not be derived from the blast. So, oxygen from charge. So, that means, I have to see say O 2 from P B O that I have to consider. O2 from FeO that I have to consider plus O2 from Fe2O3 and do not forget to consider O2 from CaCO3. So, if I make all this calculation, then I will be getting oxygen in the charge that is 4.919 kg moles. So, oxygen derived from the blast that will be 10.013 minus 4.19. So, the amount of air amount of air that will be equal to 10.013 minus 4.919 divide by 0 0.21 into 22.4. So, the amount of blast that will be required it will be 543.66 meter cube at 1 atmosphere and 273 Kelvin. So, this is about the say some steps for solving the problem number 2. Now, let us go to the problem number 3. Now, problem number 3 again it calls you you have to do the charge balance of the furnace. So, I am proceeding to calculate the charge balance. So, solution for problem number 3 
the first I will calculate amount of lead bullion, amount of lead bullion. Now, here lead bullion consists of lead plus silver and plus copper. So, this point is to be noted that all silver is entering into the lead. So, now we have to calculate the so total amount of lead charged, lead, lead charge that will be from several sources. So, that will come around 77.98 tons. Now, say copper charged. Again, you have to look the sources of copper from where it is entering into the furnace. So, the only source is cinder, which contains 2 percent copper sulphide, and cinder is 50 tons, and another source is sinter also. So, you have to see that all from all sources you take into account the copper which is entering into the system. So, that way the copper charge will be equal to say 1 upon 100 into 150 into 128 upon 160 plus 2 upon 100 into 50 into 128 upon 160. I mean you have to convert also if CO 2 H is given then accordingly copper. So, that will be coming out to be equal to 2 tons. That means, total copper you are charging is 2 tons. Now, you have to see say sulphur charged, sulphur charge. So, again you have to make some calculations. So, sulphur charge will be 3.62 plus 0 0.95 plus 0 0.5. I omitted some steps, I think they are very easy and you can come to this figure. You have to consider from all sources from where sulphur is entering. So, that is equal to 5.07 tons. That is how much that much amount of sulphur charge. Now, you have to calculate iron charged from all the sources from where iron is charged and as I see in the problem, the source of iron is sinter that is Fe 2 O 3 which is 19 percent and cinder which also contains 90 percent Fe 2 O 3. So, you have to consider both the sources. So, I have just calculated and I leave the calculation for you that will come out to be 51.45 tons. Okay. So, now we have to calculate the uh, charge balance of so, mat and everything we have to calculate. So, copper in mat, copper in mat that will be equal to 4 by 3 tons as per the condition of the problem and copper in lead bullion, copper in lead bullion that is equal to 2 by 3 tons, that 2 tons will be divided accordingly. So, now sulphur used for copper to make Cu 2 S, because in the mat the sulphur will not be free, it is with the combined with the Cu 2 S. So, sulphur used for copper that is equal to 1 by 3 tons. And now, say SiO 2 in slag, SiO 2 in slag that is equal to 40.75 tons. Now, FeO in slag, FeO in slag that will be 58.21 tons. So, Fe in slag, Fe in slag that is equal to 45.27 tons. Now, why I am doing this thing? Because first of all, I must know how much amount of iron is entering into the mat, then I can calculate. So, iron in slag I know, now iron in mat I can calculate. So, iron in mat 
that will be equal to 6.18 tons. So, now I can calculate F E S in MET. Now I can calculate F E S in MET. So, F E S in MET that will be 9.71 tons. So, now I can calculate sulfur with lead in mat that will be equal to 5.07 minus 1 by 3 as I earlier I calculated minus 3.53. So, that will be equal to 1.21 tons. So, now I can calculate weight of PBS, weight of PBS that will be equal to 9.04 tons because this value you have to multiply by 239 divided by 32 because the sulfur with lead in mat that is 1.21. So, accordingly you will get 9.04 tons. So, now I can calculate say lead in mat, now I can calculate lead in mat. So, lead in mat will be 7.83 tons, it is simply 207 by 239. So, lead in mat I know, now I can calculate lead in lead boolean, now I can calculate lead in lead boolean that will be equal to 77.98 minus 7.83 that will be equal to 70.15 tons. So, that is why in order to calculate lead in lead boolean you have to make all these exercise because some amount of lead is lost in the slag or iron is entering into mat and slag and so on and to come up with the lead sulphide and so on. So, straight away you would not be able to calculate what is the lead in lead boolean. So, that is why these exercise has to be done. Now, copper in lead boolean, copper in lead boolean that is 0 0.67 tons and silver in lead boolean, silver will enter as it is that will be 0 0.34 tons. So, now I can calculate say weight of boolean or amount of boolean, weight of lead boolean, I have to sum total and that will be equal to 71.16 tons and we can just calculate the percent. So, therefore, lead that will be 98.58 percent copper 0 0.94 percent and silver 0 0.48 percent. This is just a percentage wise the uh, lead boolean. Now, we can calculate say weight of mat, weight of mat that is equal to 20.42 tons, you have to sum total and if you are say percentage wise, percentage let me use another color. So, P B S that is equal to 44.27 percent. C U 2 S 8.18 percent and F E S 47.55 percent. So, that is what the uh, weight of mat. Now, next is weight of slag, weight of slag and the slag weight is 115.94 tons and percentage wise FeO it has, it has SiO2, it has calcium oxide. So, FeO is 50.21 percent, SiO2 35.15 percent and calcium oxide is 14.64 percent. 
Now this problem you should also understand what are the inputs and what are the outputs. So the output is one lead boolean, mat and slag. Now since the charge does not contain arsenic, so there will not be any spice. You remember in that uh, in, in earlier lecture I said that the output of the less blast furnace consists of slag, mat, spice and lead. So since the charge does not contain any arsenic, so there will not be any uh, spice in the output of the blast furnace. Rest you are seeing that whatever I said in the introduction of reduction smelting for lead, you are seeing that the outputs are uh, slag, mat and lead boolean. And also outputs will also you have to find out the problem says that uh, percentage of carbon burnt at the two year when 90 percent carbon of the coke is burnt to CO and 10 percent to CO2. Now here uh, well I am giving you the solution, but then you have to think how to approach to this particular problem. Uh, my suggestion would be in order to solve this particular part that is part C of problem 3, I will like you that not to see the solution, think over the problem and then arrive at your own solution and then compare uh, with what I have done. Because I have also done with a long, with a long time and long exercise and long thinking, I would like you to see that how such problems should be attacked. Oh, anyway, so what I am doing now, since nothing is known, so I will be doing only oxygen balance and carbon balance. That is the key. So let us take it now. Say x ton mole of oxygen is supplied through two years. Is supplied through two years. Now remember. Why I have taken this approach? Because from the blast furnace lead smelting, it is clear that whatever air you supply, it is used for oxidation of carbon only in this particular system. That is the I think that is the key to approach to this particular problem. Because whatever air you supply, it is used for oxidation of carbon. And I am considering now say y ton mole. say y ton mole of CO and CO2 at the exit. Rest I do not have any other information except this because it says 90 percent carbon to CO and 10 percent to CO2. Rest information I do not have. So, I cannot make any nitrogen balance in order to calculate the volume of the blast. Nothing I can do it. This is what the information I have. Now, I have to do oxygen balance. So, let us see I will write oxygen balance. See the oxygen balance now O2 from charge because you know part of the O2 is also coming from the charge from Fe2O3 from oxidation IFeO and so on whatever the PBO is there in the charge. So, oxygen is also coming. So, accordingly the oxygen which are blowing through the two year will be lower than will be uh, required less than what oxygen is contained in the charge. The system has its own oxygen. So, that point is to be clear that is why I am mean, oxygen from charge. minus oxygen in slag because it is forming by oxidation plus oxygen supplied through air plus oxygen supplied through air that will be equal to oxygen in exit gas oxygen in exit gas. Uh, this balance you should be uh, able to make in order to solve uh, this particular problem. You have to consider the oxygen which is present in the system, which introduced in the form of the charge. Also, the oxygen in the slag is also there, say FeO and all these things, although it has to be considered. So, if I do that, then I form the balance which is 1 minus 0.4 please do the calculation I have given enough hint to you that will be equal to 1.5 y upon 2.5 into 1 by 2 plus y upon 2.5 and that is my equation 1. Now next I have to do the carbon balance. Now next let me do it now carbon balance.
let me do the carbon balance. Now, carbon balance say carbon from coke, now oxygen from charge do not forget to take oxygen from CaCO3, do not forget. So, carbon from coke plus carbon from CaCO3 that will be equal to carbon in the exit gases because uh, carbon is not being accumulated at the steady state material balance input should be equal to output. So, that will be y upon 2.5 plus 1.5 y upon 2.5 and this is my equation number 2. So, if I make this equation I will write in kg mole that will be 27 point by 12 plus 0 0.1425 that is equal to y. Now, please think it over before you see the solution. I mean do not see the solution. Uh, first try to understand the problem, try to solve and see how to approach such problem. I mean this is a very tricky problem. So, now I can calculate from here y by equation 1 and 2, y will be equal to 2.3925 ton moles. I hope y we have considered as CO plus CO2 and x that is equal to 1.075 ton moles. x if you recall x was oxygen supplied through 2 years, oxygen supplied through 2 years, through 2 years or through 2 years that means oxygen from air whichever way you want to understand. So, now I have to find out say carbon burnt for CO, carbon burnt for CO that will be equal to 0.9 into 1.075 into 2. So, carbon burnt to CO that will be 1.935 ton moles and carbon burnt for CO2 that will be 0 0.1075 ton moles. So, total carbon in tons, total carbon that will be equal to 24.5 tons. So, percent carbon burnt at the 2 year, burnt at the 2 year that will be equal to 24.5 upon 27 into 100. So, that will be equal to 90.7 percent and that is the answer for this. Now, that is what the answer for the part C of the problem number 3 and here it says that the charge balance. So, ultimately you will be putting as an answer the charge balance all the weights inputs are given. So, in the output you will be writing the weights of mat weights of slag, weights of uh, lead bullion, then carbon burnt at the 2 year and all these things will comprise of the charge balance of the process. So, that is what the problem number 3. So, let us see the fourth problem. The fourth problem is where you have to find out amount of lead bullion, mat and calcium carbonate. So, let us make a box for material balance. So, this is what a material box balance. So, here, so let us take the basis of calculation say 1000 kg. 1000 kg is the lead ore that we are using. So, 1000 kg lead ore, the composition I am writing PBO that is given say PBO is given 25 percent, PBS 
18 percent F E 2 O 3 22 percent C U 2 S 2 percent S I O 2 29 percent and calcium oxide is 4 percent that is what the ore. Now, coke say this is the lead ore. Coke, coke is 160 kg and here say carbon that is equal to 90 percent and SiO2 that is equal to 10 percent. Now, the problem further says that pure calcium carbonate is charged pure calcium carbonate is the flux, I mean the agent to flux. So, it further says you produce lead bullion, lead bullion and lead bullion should contain lead and copper, that is what the output I am giving. Then next output you have is the mat and MET will contain PBS, CU2S and FES. Then slag and it is said slag is having 18.5 percent calcium oxide that is what the problem is said. Now, you have to find out the amount of lead, bullion, mat and calcium carbonate that is what you have to find out the uh, in this particular problem. Now, they are all smelted in the blast furnace and these are the outputs are given. Now, again say not to calculate lead bullion. So, we first of all calculate lead charged amount of lead charged that will be equal to 250 upon 223 into 207 plus 180 upon 239 into 207. Now, mind you here I have taken the atomic weights of lead 207, uh, then sulfur I will be taking 32, iron I will be taking 56, copper if at all needed I will take 64, silicon if needed I will take 28, calcium if needed I will take 40 and that is all. Oxygen well, of course, this atomic weight is 16, these are the atomic weights that I will be using to solve this particular problem. So, amount of lead charge is all that will be equal to 232 plus 156 and that makes 388 kg that is the amount of lead you charge. So, loss of lead loss of lead in fumes and uh, gases or whatever that will be equal to 388 into 0 0.05 that is equal to 19.4 kg. Lead in mat, lead in mat as it is said that is equal to 388 into 0.08 that is equal to 31 kg and therefore, PBS in mat can easily recalculate 35.84 kg that is one part of one component or one part of mat which is PBS. Now, let us calculate CU2S. So, for CU2S the copper charged copper 
that is equal to 20 into 128 upon 160 that comes around 16. So, copper in met as problem says that is equal to 8 kg. Therefore, amount of Cu 2 S that is equal to 10 kg. So, this is another component of the mat and rest copper is in boolean. So, amount of lead boolean now we can calculate. Amount of lead boolean So, that will be consisting of lead plus copper. So, this will be equal to 345.6 kg that is the amount of lead boolean. You can just sum total lead and the uh, copper which is entering into the boolean. Let us calculate now met and calcium carbonate we have to calculate. We have calculate only lead boolean. Now, in order to calculate met we have to do some exercise first of all we have to calculate how much amount of sulphur is charged. Say sulphur charged that will be equal to 180 into 32 upon 239 plus 20 into 32 upon 160 and that makes 28 kg that much amount of sulphur is being charged. Now, so sulphur in met sulphur in met that is equal to 25.2 kg. So, now we have to find out here say sulphur with P B S of met and sulphur with C U 2 S of met. So, then we can find out that means, first you have to find out sulphur with PBS of met and you have to find out sulfur with Cu 2 S of met that is how much lead is entering into the met how much copper that calculation we have done earlier and that total sulfur which is with PBS and Cu 2 S that is equal to it comes total sulfur that is equal to 6.8 here, here it is 4.8 and that is equal to 2 of course, in kg they are all in kg. So, sulphur with iron in mat sulphur with iron in mat of course, you have to subtract. So, that will be 18.4 kg that means, amount of sulphur with iron in mat. So, from here amount of F E S amount of F E S that will be equal to 18.4 into 88 divided by 32. So, amount of F E S will be 50.6 kg. So, now we are in a position to write down the met. So, the met amount that will be P B S then it has Cu 2 S, then it has F E S. So, P B S as we calculated 35.84, Cu 2 S 10.00, F E S is 50.60, mind you they are all in kg, where in percent wise the percent is 37.6. 10.37 and 55.47 that is this, that is this and that is this, that is what the met comprised of. Now, where now the next output is the we have to calculate the amount of slag in order to calculate amount of calcium carbonate because you cannot calculate calcium carbonate unless you know the calcium oxide. So, for that purpose first you have to calculate the amount of slag and then calcium oxide then calcium carbonate. So, the slag 
it will have say S i O 2 from all sources that will be 306 kg this is the amount of S i O 2. Then you have to calculate F e O, F e O would be so iron charged minus iron in mat. do not forget to convert it into F e O that will be 72 into by 56. So, iron charge is 154 kg minus 32.2 into 72 by 56. So, the amount of F e O that will be equal to 156.6 kg. Now, once you know the amount of F u, now I can calculate the weight of slag. Weight of slag that will be 306 plus 156.6 because it says 18.5 percent is the CO in slag. So, 100 minus 18.5 percent will be some total of SiO2 and F u. So, if I divide by 81.5 into 100, then the weight of slag that will be equal to 567.6 kg. Once again, I in order to calculate the amount of calcium carbonate which is being asked in the problem, you must be wondering why I have calculated SiO2 and FeO3, because the problem says that the slag contains 18.5 percent calcium oxide. So, unless you calculate the amount of slag, you cannot calculate the amount of calcium carbonate or if you have another, another way of calculation, I do not know. Think of. So, weight of slag I got now. Now, I can calculate calcium oxide in slag. Now, I can calculate calcium oxide in slag that will be 105 kg because this is the again you have to do here calcium oxide balance because if you read the problem, the problem says the roasted ore has some 4 percent calcium oxide. So, calcium carbonate that means CaO from CaCO3, CaO from CaCO3 that will be 105 minus 40 that will be 65 kg. So, as such amount of CaCO3, amount of CaCO3 that will be equal to 116 kg. So, this is how the problems are to be tackled. Now, here in this particular session what I have done, I have illustrated the different ways of uh, problems and different methods to approach the problem. However, it is intended that you develop your own method of solution of the problem without seeing the solution and of course, without seeing the answers.